Good evening and welcome to the Gospel Truth. I'm Alan Jackson, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for blessing me with this another outpouring of his tender love and mercy and that he's allowed me once again to be on this the time side of life and to have this another blessed privilege to come to you in his name by way of this television medium and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as I always do, I'd like to continue to express my appreciation and my gratitude to the production staff for their continued service to the gospel truth. And it's my prayer that God will continue to bless each one of them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of as well. And then, of course, I'm praying on your behalf as participant observers. And it's my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family with all of those things that he knows that you're standing in need of as well. And then, of course, I'm encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer, and it's only God who can provide me with those things that I am standing in need of. And so, before we do get into the message this evening, I do have my prayer list and a song. And so, uh, right now, let us go to our prayer list, and we continue to pray on behalf of Annette Jeffrey, Geraldine Keyes, Imogene Hayes, Elizabeth Adams, Yvonne Davis, the Ahmad Aubrey family, the Brianna Taylor family, the Teresa Watson family, Virginia Daniels, Deborah Price, Teresa Wanzo, Joe Pro Brokaw, Brother Josie Pitt Sr., and Lonnie Pitt Sr., and family, Sheldon Horton, Jim Young, Nancy Lagarde, the Richard Brooks family, Shelley Lopez County, Cornelius County, Shirley Finn. The Jacob Blake family, or that's Jacob Blake and family. The Daniel Prude family, Annie Riley family, that's Annie Riley and the Flowers family. Perlene Jesse, Candace Powers, Terrence Bailey, Wilma Carpenter, Sherry Drumgoo, Betty Williams of The Connection, Bethany Williams, Benita Coates, Susan Gilmer and family, James Walker Sr., Dorothy Lofton, uh, Brenda Williams, the George Floyd family, Vincent Jones Jr., Ayanna Rowe, Commissar Phillips, Stacy Johnson, Dudley Sankey, Jesse Stevenson Jr., and Sylvester Stevenson Sr., Marilyn Washington, and Ursi Joyner. We're praying also on behalf of the bereaved Dorothy Wells family. She is the uh, uh, founder and director of the Eastern Heirs, and the Lord called her home on April the 2nd, 2020. And uh, Stacy Wells Young will be leading this song that was directed initially by Sister Wells. And George Pendergrass, he's one of the soloists, and he was one of the young men that was singing back in the day when I was a youngster, and we would be attending uh, the youth conference. So, of course, we are uh, uh, dedicating this song to the memory of Sister Dorothy uh, Carpenter, Wells, and during this time of the this pandemic, we certainly do need the Lord to help us to hold out. So, without any further remarks, the Eastern Airs, Lord, help us to hold out. Lord.
to express our appreciation to uh, Sister Wells's group, the Eastern Airs, and it's our prayer that uh, uh, her family will be comforted. And she, of course, was the, uh, as I said earlier, the preacher of the, the, the wife of that great New York preacher, Roosevelt C. Wells. So this evening, I am inviting your attention to the book of John, the 10th chapter, and the verse is number 10. That's John, the 10th chapter, and the verse is number 10. And the Bible reads thusly, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And it is from this verse this evening that I am selecting for a subject the reason Jesus came. The reason Jesus came. 
Now recently I presented a lesson entitled The Gospel of Jesus Christ. Now if you missed that lesson, uh, you can also go to our YouTube channel and bring up the Gospel Truth with Alan Jackson and you can view that message. Now tonight I want to tell you the reason Jesus came. All right? So first of all, we need to know that Jesus came, but he didn't just come, just to come. You know, it was a purpose. But Jesus did not come merely to endorse what had already been done. All right? Uh, he didn't come to add to the law. And he did not come to be exploited by our system of capitalism. Jesus came to die for humanity. Romans 5 and 8, the Bible tells us, But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's Romans, the fifth chapter, verse number 8. And then the Bible lets us know, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's Romans 3 and the verses number 23. And then we find that God, uh, he loved us all so much that he made a sacrifice. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus came to shed his blood. All right, Matthew 26 and the 28th verse, for this is my blood. Uh -huh. of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And again, remember, we all have sinned. So Jesus came to remit our sins. And we find in Ephesians, the first chapter, in the verses number seven, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Jesus came to give us the gospel. And that's why I told you if you missed that lesson last, uh, it's been a week or so ago, maybe last month now when you get this message, but it was entitled the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so Jesus came to give us the gospel. And I, I referred you over to 1 Corinthians the 15th chapter verses 1 through 4, where Paul indicated, first of all, he delivered unto us what he had received according to the scriptures, how that Christ died, he was buried according to the scriptures, and that he rose again the third day. So again, Jesus came to give us the gospel, and we know the gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you must believe that. You must commit that to your heart. Believe that and accept that in order for you to be a recipient of eternal life. All right, the book is Romans, the sixth chapter, and the verse is number 17. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. This evening, we're talking about the reason Jesus came. Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So we keep in mind that Jesus came for the purpose of bringing us the good news, the gospel, all right, so that we could be made free from our sins. Romans, first chapter, verse number 16. Paul lets us know how powerful of the gospel is. He says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. All right? And so now we understand that Jesus came also to establish or to build his church. Matthew 16, 18, you might remember that scenario where Jesus had come into the coast of Caesarea and Philippi, and there were a crowd gathering around, and so Jesus looked out to among his apostles, and he asked them, he said, well, who do these folks say that I am? And then they told him, well, some said you're Jeremiah, John the Baptist, Elias, or just one of the prophets. 
And then he turned to his own disciple, apostle Peter and said, but whom do you say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So Jesus came to provide a way for us to get from earth to glory, and that is through his church, which he came to establish. All right? And, and then it was in uh, Jerusalem, about A.D. 33, this is Acts, the second chapter, where the church came into existence because the apostles did exactly what he told them to do. Told them over there in Luke 24, 49, to tarry in Jerusalem until they be endued with power from on high. And the Bible says that they were all together in one accord in one place in Jerusalem. And then suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind filled all the house where they were sitting. All right? So it was that day that the church came into existence. Now Jesus came also to give us a new name. And if you listen to the prophet Isaiah 62 and verse number 2, And the Gentiles shall see the righteousness and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. All right? And so we know the Bible lets us know over there in the book of Acts, the 11th chapter, what that new name is. The Bible says, and when they had found him, uh, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So the new name that the Lord came, that he gave, was for the purpose of us having that name. And that name is Christians. Nothing else, no more, no less. We're just Christians. Nothing hyphenated. We're just Christians. And that was the name that Jesus came to give us. All right. He also came to give us a new day to worship. All right. We all remember back under the old law, it was on the Sabbath day. But he came to give us a new day. But the Bible tells us over there in the book of Acts 20 and 7. Uh -huh. And uh, the day, the Bible says, and upon the first day of the week, which we now know to be Sunday, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Now some folk are saying, now see, I couldn't be in that church if Paul preached all the way up until midnight. Well, that was Paul, but then, you know, they had a different zeal at that time than we do today. All right? Jesus came uh -huh, to give a new law. All right? Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 17 and 18. Jesus says, think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. All right? For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no well ways pass from the law until all be fulfilled. Jesus came uh -huh, to give us hope. All right? And that hope we find over there in the book of John, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 3. It says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I go now to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So that hope of eternal life is what we have as a result of Jesus coming here to this low land of sin and sorrow, uh -huh, living a sinless life where he went to the cross of Calvary, hung, bled, and died, and he got up a conquering king so that we might have a right to eternal life. So as I conclude my lesson, Jesus did not come in vain, but he accomplished his purpose. And that purpose was to build his church, 
That's right, the church of Christ. And he established it. Remember, I just told you, it was over there in Matthew 16, 18, where Jesus said to Peter, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then I told you that the apostles did what Jesus told them to do. He told them to wait for them in Jerusalem. In Acts, the second chapter, the church came into existence, or it was established on the day of Pentecost, about A.D. 33, in Jerusalem. And what we find out is that those who believe and obey his will, they are added, or the saved are added to the church. Acts 2, 47, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added daily to the church, such as should be saved. And it is, uh huh, the church that Jesus built. It's a blood bought institution, if you will. Let me go over here to Acts right quick so I can explain to you and show you how that it is a blood bought institution. And this is what we find in the book of Acts, the 20th chapter, in the verse number 28. Acts, 20th chapter, in the verse number 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. All right? So we need to understand that Jesus, yes, incarnate God, uh -huh, purchased the church with his blood. Somebody say, well, see, that says the church of God. Well, we know the Bible tells us that God is a spirit. And what do we know about the spirit? The spirit don't have flesh and blood. All right? But Jesus, in the flesh, God, uh-huh, shed his blood for his church, all right? And not only that, he is the head, uh-huh, of his church, not the pope. I know there's a big organization, a religious organization that's worldwide, but I came by tonight to let you know that, that, that Jesus is the head of his church and not the pope, all right? And the Bible tells us over there in Ephesians 1, 22 and 23 that Jesus Christ is the head uh -huh, of his church. If you want to, you can pull on it, and I'll give you book, chapter, and verse. The Bible says over there in the book of Ephesians, first chapter, verses 22 and 23, and has put, uh -huh, God has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, the church, his church, uh -huh, which, he, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. And we know Colossians 1.18 lets us know that the body and the church are one and the same. All right? Jesus is the head of the church. He's the savior of the body. And he's the head. I know some of you won't think that all you have to do is go and kiss the Pope's hand and everything will be all right. Well, you can do that if you want to, but I came by to let you know that Jesus is the way. The only way that you're going to get from earth to glory. And then he is the savior of the body. As I said, Ephesians 5, in the verse of number 23, he makes it clear. He says, for as the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he's the savior of the body. The body being what? The church. So you have to be in his body in order to what? Receive salvation because salvation is in the body. Salvation is in the name of Jesus. And... Somebody doesn't like this, but this is word. There's only one body. That's right, just one. What do we find out about the body? The body is the church. And the Bible says, Ephesians 4, and the verses number 4, there is one body. What does that mean? There's one church and one spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling. So just keep that in mind. I'm just giving you the message this evening, why Jesus came. And I want you to know that he accomplished his mission. Uh -huh. He established the church, all right? And it has many members. Yes, a whole lot of us in it, but it's just one body. And it wears the name of Jesus. Romans 16, 16, salute one another with the holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you, all right? And, uh, and we talked about this earlier. The Christians or the church, the members have a name. And the Bible says they are Christians. Acts eleven twenty six. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And this is a church, uh huh. The Bible tells us over there, Hebrews 12 and 28, uh huh, it shall never be destroyed. And he, I came by to let you know, 
will present the church to God when the time does come. Ephesians 5 and the verses number 27, and this is what he says, uh, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, uh -huh, but it should be holy and without blemish, all right? The church is the bride of Christ. And he doesn't want to accept anything else other than his bride, which is his church. And so if you are in anything other than the body of Christ, then you need to examine yourself and check that out. You need to make your calling and election sure. You only have one time to go around in this life. See, there are some people and some organizations that will tell you, well, when you leave here, you're going to go into purgatory. And there, that's where you'll be able to make things right, and then you can go to heaven. The Bible doesn't tell us anything about that. You need to accept the fact that if you fail to obey the Lord, uh -huh, the Bible says, He that believeth and is baptized, that's Mark 16, 16, shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And so you still come to Jesus today by faith. Repentance, confession, and baptism. Well, how do you get faith? Well, the Bible says so then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So you hear the word, you believe it. Repent of your sins, confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, then be buried in the liquid grave of baptism for the remission of your sins. By doing those things, the Lord will add you to his body, which is his church. Then, of course, if you live a faithful life, he will save you in the end. I know you probably want to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on over here now to the joy of my Lord and inherit the kingdom that's been prepared for you from the foundation of the world. I'm Alan Jackson, and I'm inviting you to join us again next week if it's God's will when the gospel truth will once again come your way, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. Until then, it's my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family and to keep you all safe.